I'm often surprised that that people that grew up with all this technology don't actually know how to use a lot of it. So I, I'll sometimes see a client screen when we when we share and it's just, yeah, you're laughing. You know exactly what I'm going to say. It's 72 hilarious. tabs open and their, their desktop is cluttered. Desktop is cluttered. Yeah. So I, I, I teach the same things I used to teach with filing papers and mm-hmm. setting up systems and creating folders. And, you know, we had hanging folders, of course, before. And then you had the manila folders that went in there. Well, it's the same kind of concept. Sure. But you can do it on your computer. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast, where our mission is to share business ideas, practices, and strategies while we enjoy our cup of coffee. Today's guest is Julie Shulam, and she's going to be talking with us a little bit about productivity from an executive coaching perspective. Uh, where are you losing time in your day, and how can you make some assessments on that? So we're going to jump into that conversation in just a few minutes. One of the ways that you can be the most effective with your time is to subscribe to the podcast, because this will say you time for having to search for it on a regular basis. It will come to you and notify you when new episodes are released. See what I did there. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already on whatever platform that you're listening to or watching on. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, it's the the button there that says follow or subscribe. And if you're listening to this on a podcast platform, there's a button in front of you somewhere that says subscribe so that you can get the latest episodes. We are excited to share these with you and you can find out more by visiting lockdoc.net slash podcast. Now, grab a cup of coffee and let's jump right into this conversation with Julie Schuler. We got so much to say, we got a podcast to make, we're sipping on lattes, and it's time for a coffee break. It's time for a coffee break. Julie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, excited to chat with you a little bit um, on productivity and a little bit of uh, maybe maybe fi- finding some tips on minimizing distractions around here. How about that? Sounds fantastic, Chad. All right. Well, before we do that, we do have to have a distraction and we, we are going to tackle ra- rapid fire, five randomly selected questions just to get under your skin with unknown point values. And then to, to make things interesting, we're going to give you a score at the end. Sounds interesting. I like it. All right. So here we go. Uh, question number one, what was the unspoken scandal in your town when you were growing up? The thing that you, everybody knew what was going on, but we didn't talk about it. Oh, gosh, I was in such a small town. Everyone talked about everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we knew everything. Everybody knew everything. Everybody knew everything. I'm trying to think. I grew up in a small town as well. And um, there, I, the, the, the one scandal that I can remember about uh, was there was a we had a corner store and there was a robbery at the corner store. And it was, everybody was talking about who it was and making all kinds of uh, uh, accusations and rumors about who who it actually was. I don't actually know who it it ended up being, but that was our little scandal. No, we didn't have, I can't recall any kind of scandals that that occurred. All right. (laughs) Question number two, what are the top three qualities that you admire in other people? Oh, that's a great one. Kindness, honesty, and someone who can just be authentic. Authentic. Kindness, honesty, and authenticity. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's good. Good, good characters. All right. I get some points there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Question number three. What is, uh, what was the last thing that you were truly disappointed about? Mm. Probably that I couldn't bring my sports car out to where I live. <laughs> ah, what kind of sports car did you have? I had a 350Z. Oh. I loved that little car. Why couldn't you bring it with you? Because uh, the pitch of the driveway in the house I have now uh, was such that it would not have gotten up the driveway. Uh, so I had to let, let it go, go. Yeah. sell it off, 
leave it where it was. Well, the, the big question is, was did you sell it when prices were high for vehicles or was or did you catch the... No. <laughs> no, um, uh, I, I was able to do that with my house, but yeah. not with the car. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'll take what I got. There you go. All right, question, <laughs> num- question number four. If you had the choice to go back in time or into the future, which one would you choose? Hmm. Oh, that's a that's a curious one. Yeah. Um I think I would go in the future. Yeah. I think that's a safe bet. We already yeah. know what happened in the past. We we do know and and I like the the newness. All right. Last and, question. And so, question number 5. What would your dream day look like? I have my dream day. Oh. <laughs> So my dream day is is that it's my dream week. I created it and it's it's awesome. Well, what is it? I will tell you. Okay. I have um I work with clients on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. And I um I I love my work so much that that is that is the best day is when I am when I'm helping people and working with them. And um, I start my day with walking my dog, working out, and just I, I have a very nice, relaxed pace so that when I start my day, I'm not a frazzled mess. And then I work all the way through till maybe five or six in the evening and then uh, spend the evening relaxing, cooking dinner. I like to cook. And um, on Mondays and Fridays, I write. All right. Well, there you go. That's a that's a, a structure it's for a, a week for you. It, it's a really great structure. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. All right. You made it through rapid fire. We'll give you a score 583. Okay. All right. I have no idea what the criteria is, but okay. <laughs> it's it's a common thing that nobody knows what the criteria is. So it's <laughs> it's all good. It's all, all well. Well, um, so great segue. Well, first of all, I, I am curious, what kind of dog do you have? I have a, um, a Yorkie Poo. A Yorkie Poo. As, as we know. She's just a little eight and a half pound, smart as a whip, cute little dog. We had a Yorkie a few years ago, and it was not a smart little dog. So um, the the poo the poodle part may have uh, improved the intelligence. Yeah, very much so. The poodle part, and she's and she's she's not only really sharp, but she's also um, she's hypoallergenic, doesn't shed or anything. Uh, so yeah. she's yeah. super easy to, to care for. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's get into it. So you just kind of laid out your ideal day, which is also your mm-hmm. ideal week. Uh, what is, so give us a little bit of explanation about what you do. I am an executive productivity coach. So I'm a certified professional coach through the international coaching federation, which is the leading body of coaches worldwide. And I have been doing this for I think around 19 years now. I have been a professional coach. I started out as a professional organizer and efficiency expert. So it was a very, a very nice segue into this career. Yeah. Because I now can help more people, you know, from farther distances. Because before it was just where I can actually physically get to. Okay. And now I work with clients worldwide and I help uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners, and leaders in corporate environments to be more productive, to be able to lead their teams better, to have more deliverables, to manage projects better, and to have better work-life balance. And I love working on that topic. And that became huge, huge, obviously. And uh, when COVID hit, because everyone all of a sudden is working at home, that they didn't understand how to have that separation from their personal life to their their professional life. And that's all I've been doing for the last 19 years. So that, that, was, an, that was an easy one for me to help people with. There and, you go. Yeah, it worked out great. At LockDoc Security. We believe your camera system should provide more than just surveillance. Being able to see exactly what's going on at your place of business from your phone or computer is fantastic. But what if there were more analytics, giving you the ability to improve your business operations? Track how many people visited your location, stopped by your display, and even how often they passed by your store. 
Be alerted if someone was loitering, vandalizing your business, or even dumping trash. It's time for you to take advantage of this technology. Contact us today for more information about our cloud-based camera systems, LockDock Security, helping you protect your people and property. Here's a question for you. Do you say, so you've, you've been, you said you've been doing this for 19 years. Here's a, have you seen a, uh, a change in society over the past 19 years in a natural tendency to be a little, uh, to st- uh, the starting point to be a little more disorganized? Since I have been working in the organizing space for almost 40 years, Mm -hmm. I can honestly say I have not seen any drastic changes in that time, which is interesting because when I first started, I thought, oh, there's not going to be that many people that are going to need to get organized. Eventually, I'll just help the people that need to be organized and everyone will be organized and that'll be the end. I'll have to find another career. Sure. Well, turns out that did not happen. (laughs) I, you know, I. And and interestingly, this is this is was kind of a curious realization I had. I thought, okay, when um, the the younger generations are, you know, coming into their twenties and thirties, and they are having, you know, they have all this technology mm-hmm. available to them, they're going to be even better at managing time and better at you know scheduling themselves and and being organized, and they're going to have all this, you know, this, these advantages. Yeah. Turns out that is not the case <laughs> at all. And I'm I'm often surprised that that people that grew up with all this technology don't actually know how to use a lot of it. Yeah, and that that was that was gonna be my question. My next question, I guess, is with all of the technology that we have, it seems like there's a lot of us that are still disorganized. We just have mm-hmm. more places for things to be disorganized in. Yeah. So I don't know if you if you remember, you know, maybe wow, oh, twenty years ago or so, roughly, mm-hmm. there was the whole oh, go paperless. Yeah. We shouldn't have paper. We don't need paper. Oh, well, first of all, that didn't really happen. We still had paper. So that was maybe a little less of it, but we still had paper. Yeah. And people didn't know how to deal with paper. Sure. They still don't know how to deal with paper. Mm-hmm. And now we have paper issues. And digital issues. Yeah. So I, I'll sometimes see a client screen when we when we share, and it's just yeah, you're laughing. You know exactly what I'm going to say. It's Seventy-two hilarious. tabs open, and their their desktop is cluttered. Desktop is cluttered. Yeah. And I want to introduce you to my friend Tony. Okay. <laughs> So this is uh, this is not okay. So I I I teach the same things I used to teach with filing papers and mm-hmm. setting up systems and creating folders and you know we had hanging folders of course before and then you had the Manila folders that went in there. Well, it's the same kind of concept, sure. But you can do it on your computer. So I help people to create systems. Uh, if if you were to kind of boil it down to one thing, one word. It's systems. And a lot of it also is a mindset. Mm -hmm. So I'm helping people to wrap their minds around the idea of, yes, you can file that thing away. If it's labeled properly, you'll be able to find it again. It's a lot of a lot of people have their stuff out everywhere for fear, out of sight, out of mind, which has always been an issue. So one of the things that I come back to a lot of times when we have these conversations is a lot of what I'm hearing you say are talking about establishing habits. Um, mm-hmm. We we as a I guess as a, a culture maybe or maybe it's it's not the cultural shift based off of your uh, experience, but disorganization, clutter. Uh, just kind of lack of productivity at times comes down to what are the habits that you're keeping, um, and because you know there, I, I the the one of my favorite quotes is, uh, and I I can't remember exactly where I pulled it from, so it's probably less relevant. But your character is the sum total of your habits. Your responsibility is to develop new habits for change, and that's what a lot of us. Like, okay, so so we have that in our mindset. We have that we're like in the forefront of our mind. Now, I need a little bit of help 
trying to see the the get into the details of what habits I need to start working on and someone to effectively hold me accountable for working on those so that we can get gain some productivity. Exactly. And as a as a coach, that's actually what I do. So I start with someone and I find out kind of where where are they at? Where where's the starting point? Yep. And then help them to discern where they want to end up. What's what's the end game here? What's the goal? Mm-hmm. Help create a strategic plan to get there. And then the key, which you've just said, is help hold them accountable to those intentions and have benchmark check-ins along the way so that there's, there's that forward progress, right? And there's... Um, there are many, many steps, and every person has their own skill set, what, what they already are doing well, what they need to improve upon, and then developing those habits so that it sticks. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people will say, oh, well, I tried that, and you know, I, I gave up after a week. Well, a week isn't going to cut it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't actually realize how long it takes to develop a habit. Yes. There's a lot of confusion around that. And um, I always ask my clients, how long do you think it takes to develop a habit? My answer would be until I've until I've figured it out, until I've nailed it. <laughs> our, our favorite answer, it depends. Yeah, it's a little bit cheating there. <laughs> <laughs> Covering yourself, I see. But the 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 I'd say the most common answer is three weeks or 30 days. Sure. That's what most people assume it takes. And turns out that there was research done at a university whose name I have forgotten, and I apologize for that, where it, they actually found that it takes 66 days to develop a habit. Okay. Well, if you think that you're going to, you know, you start off and say, okay, by the end of February, I'm going to have this habit nailed and this is going to be perfect. You're going to be so disappointed mm-hmm. if that, if and when that doesn't happen, because it takes longer to develop a habit. So I help people to first have a reality check and realize that this isn't going to happen overnight. And uh, but but you'll make progress. And one of the ways that I help people to do that is by what I term as anchoring. Okay. So. You look at something you're already doing consistently. Because obviously a habit is consistently doing something you want to be doing. So we look at what are you doing consistently? You know, and and it could be anything. For some, let's say they forget to take their vitamins in the morning, but they brush their teeth every day. Yeah. Okay, great. That's something we can anchor it to. So we'll anchor taking the vitamins with uh, you know, with brushing your teeth so that there's some association there. You know that this is going to be your your cue to take care of that task. And that then starts becoming a habit. And then we build on that that habit and those anchors or maybe find a different anchor for something that happens has to happen at a different point in the day. So, uh, and I've had people where we've done visualizations where it's something that, you know, we, we, Find an anchor in their day that they can remember to do something, and uh, it 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 just builds from there. But developing habits, yeah, we we take we take some time in doing that. But once you got it, it's there. Yeah. So you've got a, a little over two months to develop a habit and and really kind of uh, make it just part of your your daily process or, or part of a routine where it doesn't feel like you're really like trying to do this. Um, and it, you know, I think we all, I mean, I know for, for me, we, we, uh, it's, it's a natural thing over time right now. You know, I've, I've got, uh, habits built in, uh, my, my, uh, drive, my drive time, or I guess the, the route that I take to work. Right. And so, it's just this natural process. Do this, turn here, do this, get in the turn lane. And you don't even really think about it at that point because it just becomes so routine. Exactly. Um, even if I'm trying to go somewhere else and I'm like, ah, oh, 
man, I've already, st- I'm, half, I'm halfway to the office and I don't really know why I'm doing this. But so, so you have those types of processes and then it's, how do you take that and go, okay, yeah, I got that. I, there are certain things that I can do uh, that I've developed those habits in. And then how do you start to look at it maybe from uh, a, a self-assessment or getting uh, together with a coach to work on the process of saying, uh, hey, uh, we, uh, I want, uh, there, he's, there's some things that I am blind to that I need to start working on to build those habits because I feel like a lot of times it's, uh, you know, the, there, we build habits maybe unintentionally in some of those areas, like the, the route that you take to work, but there's other areas that you're probably blind to that says, these are some things that I'm missing productivity on or that I'm wasting time or that I'm putting non-beneficial time in. And now these are the things that I really need to clean up to, to you know, be a more effective human. Yes. And to that point, one of the things that that I help people to do is figure out where where the issues are. And that that often requires me to just listen really, really carefully. Because many times someone will describe what's going on for them uh, and, and what they're labeling it is not what it actually is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm working with a, a client now who uh, said oh, her main issue is perfectionism. And that holds her back from doing things. <clears throat> and she started, I said, well, tell me what, how that, how that is for you. You know, what, what are you describing as perfectionism? And she did. Turned out it wasn't perfectionism. It was lack of um, utilizing her calendar. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't, it wasn't what she thought it was. So she was, had, a, had a, a, an inappropriate label for what she was experiencing. And <clears throat> My my job is to figure out what is the actual issue here, sure, yeah. <laughs> what's the challenge, and then from there, help help to come up with some solutions for it. it and it depends on what it is. Yeah, in our world, uh, in the in the lock and door world, that uh, for for the the the, the company that uh, supports and produces this podcast, Lock Talk Security, mm-hmm. our we find that in our customers at times when they'll say, my door doesn't work and this is, I think this is the problem. And then we have to come back and look at a full assessment and say, well, actually here is the, the issue that, that we're running into. Yeah. We've, we've addressed the, uh, the effects that we're talking about here, but now let's go get into the cause. And that's what your, your role is, is to say, okay, well, here's, here's what I believe my effects are. And then let's go back and deal with the actual causes and, and start to work on those. Yes. I've had, I had a, a client tell me one time, you know what, you do, you don't apply a bandaid, you do surgery. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that I, cause I, I dig deep. I find out what is the actual issue? What's the root of the problem? Mm-hmm. Once we know what that is, well then, then, then it's much easier. You know, then we can, we can figure out what have a, we can find a solution. Managing your facility properties and projects is hard enough. Trying to find an emailed quote in your overflowing inbox is just one more annoyance, especially if there are multiple versions. We're working hard to make your life easier by providing all the information you need in one place. Now you can request service at a date and time that works for you, and we're making it easier to see quotes and materials needed for specific openings, including photos, so that you can approve everything from the convenience of your phone or computer. Log in to start using it now. Visit customer.lockdoc.net. So there's tons of books out there. I think, you know, many people have probably read them or at least started reading some of them on, you know, kind of a, a organizing your day, starting your day, getting things, you know, trying to get the most productivity out there. Uh, you know, one comes to mind is is Eat That Frog. Uh, and you, and I've, I've seen some other time management books and I've read a lot of them and gone through a lot of them because it's like, all right. How do I how do I position myself to be the most effective with my time? Um, because it's very easy um, at any point of an organization to find yourself uh, losing focus of what is the most important things that you should be working on right now. And that's at every role. Uh, and it's easy for us to kind of have time uh, stretch and time bleed into all of these other areas. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so from when you talk about uh, helping executives with productivity, you know, one of the things that comes to mind for me is how do how do you establish some good guidelines with an executive or the the leader of a particular team or organization, and give them the tools and resources to help with their team to put small little. Uh, tweaks on their time for productivity because it's not it you know the if you got the executive or the leader at the most productivity and uh, efficiency that they can be at how can they uh, that person's role is going to be a little bit different than maybe the rest of the team how do you uh, maybe give them some tools that they can help dissect that down to the rest of their team uh, that's such a good question it that's actually <clears throat> Many things <laughs> actually in that in that question there. Let's see how I'm gonna how I'm gonna attack that one. When I'm working with an executive, uh, a leader of any sort who's got direct reports that they are they are managing, I'd say the number one issue that gets brought up in coaching sessions is I have too many meetings and I don't I can't get anything done. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, hands down, meetings is the biggest complaint that I hear. Sure. And so what I help help the leader to do is really figure out which of those meetings is are really which are really essential. Mm-hmm. What do they need to be going to? Because if you're spending all your time in meetings and you have no time to do the work that the meetings are talking about, mm-hmm. you're going to end up not getting the deliverables, uh, you know, delivered if you will. So we we first we look at we look at the essence of what the meetings are doing. What are they about? Are you really necess- are you you really n- required to be there? Firstly, and is it essential that you are in order? To, are you bringing anything to the table? Uh, if you can get a, a review or an overview of the meeting in, a, in an email later, that that might be sufficient. Mm-hmm. So I've had lots of the the people that I've worked with. They've they've really looked carefully at their at their, li- their list of meetings and decided which ones that they really don't need to be part of and pulled out of them so that they have more time to do the tasks that they need to work on and more time to lead their people mm-hmm. and <clears throat> sometimes that comes down to having uh Fewer one-on-ones, you know, there maybe some, not everybody needs to have a weekly one-on-one. Maybe every other week is, is, is fine. Uh, meeting with your team on a more consistent basis. And then you know, it, for everyone, it, it works out a little differently, but assessing that, which a lot of leaders don't do, they just keep getting, you know, a, a barrage of meetings thrown at them. And, you know, all of a sudden there's another half a dozen meetings on the calendar they weren't expecting mm-hmm. and they just keep going and rolling with it instead of really stepping back and assessing what's really important. And that comes down to also prioritizing one's day mm-hmm. and really being able to look at, okay, what, what is my, my, my job? What is the most important thing that I do in this role? What am I bringing to the the, the team and or department and or company? Mm-hmm. And how am I going to be able to effectively produce what I need to and motivate my team and be a good example so that we can get things done? And it, you know, because there's a trickle down effect. People will see what is the, what is my boss doing? What mm-hmm. is my boss's boss doing? And when everyone is doing their job in the most efficient manner, everything everything goes along great. I like that assessment. So uh, working through the process of one kind of assessing my my calendar, assessing my day, mm-hmm. f- defining that priority, and then. If I start to, if I basically, you know, define those those characteristics, then I can start to fill in the things that I'm doing on a daily basis to make sure that they're lending credence to that. If if my priority is to, you know, if I'm in a sales role, my, my priority is to create sales appointments. If my appointment is filled up with things that are conflicting with that, then obviously it's 
uh, it's it's a negative impact on the the outcome. Um, so right. I, I think that that's a good simple exercise that really anybody can do. If you're keeping a good calendar or not, you should be able to assess that over a period of a couple of weeks and really go back and say, hey, you know, where am I actually spending my time? And and so let me get prioritized. It, it, beautifully said. Yes. Exactly. Uh, I think that's a great takeaway for today. Um, I know you obviously offer this uh, more in depth with people. So uh, if people want to get in touch with you and say, hey, yeah, I am all over the place. I I can't figure (laughs) out what's going on. And I feel like my productivity is just drowning every single day. I can't feel like I'm getting anything done at the end of the day. Or I feel like at the Friday afternoon, I've got so much stuff I've got to do on the weekend just so that I can be prepared for Monday. How do they get in touch with you? Very easy. I'm very, very easy to find. Uh, my just, website, just go to North Georgia. You just go to North Georgia. <laughs> Actually, uh, if you just Google my name, Julie yeah. Shulam, yeah. Uh, I'm the only Julie Shulam on the internet. There you go. So I'm pretty easy to find. Coach Julie Shulam will do it. My website is coachjulie.com. And Julie is spelled J-U-L-I. Naturally. No again. So just coachjulie.com and you can find me there. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, pretty much all, all those important with social media sites that LinkedIn is a, is probably the best one to find me at. That's it. Me uh, that'd be a good place to, to track you down. Julie, thank you for your time here today and your insights. Uh, very informative. And I think yeah, anybody that's listening can say, yep, I'm going to, I can do that starting today. I can assess my calendar. Let me see where I can prioritize my my day. And then when I get stuck, I can I can contact Julie and we can get this thing figured out. Yep. I love to help and create systems and help people get better organized so that they can you know, basically have more fun and sure. more joy in their life. Well, yeah. thank you for joining us today. It was a blast. Julie, thanks again for joining us today. It was such a blast. Uh, great to chat with you. And hopefully everything works out well with your Yorkie doodle poodle doodle dog. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure you uh, subscribe. We've got plenty more episodes on the way and we don't want you to miss out on a single one of them. And you can find out all, find out more about all of them and the, uh, the inf- more information for anything that you've heard on our podcast, all available at lockdoc.net slash podcast. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. We'll see you next time right here on the Coffee Break Podcast. <laughs>